I mean, we were so young when we did when we mm. did Gossip Girl, and like maybe a year or two after, you said something to the effect of like, "Oh man, yeah, like, like I'm still just sort of processing all of that," as I'm sure you are too. I'll never forget it because it made me think. You know, I was like, "Wow, maybe I I haven't really like mm. fully processed what we just what, what, we, <laughs> what we went through because it was yeah. so it really was crazy. I mean that yeah. that that whole thing. Yeah. People do feel like they know you, and they mm. also feel like. Hey, you have a billion dollars and you're, you know, mm. that, that, you know, yeah. you're, you're, you're sat and you're, you, you have the perfect mm. thing going when it's really, you know, there's all these other layers, uh, interesting layers to it. And we were like, that was our, yeah. those were also kind of our college. It was. College yeah. I years. mean, we were still kind wow. of kids when we got out, Yeah, you know, not, not entirely. Awesome. I mean, we were, I was 25, but I feel like I'm finally at a point where I'm able to reflect on the, specifically the gossip girl years and synthesize what I'm grateful for and what I can love about it and just accept the frustrations I had at the time as just like the struggles of youth, you know, being being right. being made extreme and magnified by having, I mean, when we first moved to New York City, our faces were on billboards in Times Square, you know? Right. And I remember wow. at the time just being like, yeah, there's like that processing thing. There's so... There's no time to process it. Because, dude, we were, I mean, I'm, I feel like from, what day was that? It was, it aired on September 19th. Wow. Oh my God, that's right. That was like the exact day on Tuesday, wow. I remember. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it was on that network was, television. Yeah. And then from that day on, man, <laughs> until that thing ended, I mean, has anyone ever stopped calling me Dan? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. That was 15 years ago. Yeah. And it's like, you know, and I mean, but at least for those next six years, it did not stop. Mm. Like every, right. like we just, I mean, it was like every weekend we had a photo shoot and then every hiatus right. we had either a project or some kind of press tour. Since you guys brought it up, I feel like we would be remiss. Let's just talk about Gossip Girl. A couple for of minutes. Gossip Girl questions. Um, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I do, I, I have like a very specific one that I want to ask, but maybe actually Chase sort of in this line of like processing, what can you share about sort of that experience? Positive, negative, whatever you're comfortable with. Right. There, were, there was definitely a lot of negatives and positives, but I mean, it was so... How do I? How can I like make it succinct? I mean, it was just such a wild time. It was so novel as well. Like New York City, I have such like this romanticized love for. Mm. I still do. I'm like still yeah. in love with that city because of it. Um, but we were given the keys uh, to the city at a, at a, at a crazy time. And a lot of partying and uh, you know and access to, to different things that you can sort of get caught up in. That was at the same time okay in your early twenties and, and a lot of fun, but. Uh, you are kind of like Mickey Mouse to Disneyland. You know, and people see you and you're like this character in this city. <laughs> wow, wow of, that's true. That's actually, wow. that's actually funny. That's a funny metaphor. You are like Mickey Mouse <laughs> yeah. at yeah. Disneyland. Or which, like, is yeah, to say, like, which is to say you're a faceless person inside of a suit <laughs> who cannot be seen or heard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, who, <laughs> deeper than we ever thought. <laughs> who everybody's taking <laughs> pictures with. And inside you're like. <laughs> yeah. And it, it, it did create, for me at least, I, I'm a private, I'm a little bit more on the private side. I mean, I'm, really, I'm, I'm really extroverted, but, but it created a little bit of paranoia. I don't know about yeah. you, Penn, but I, I, like, I feel well, like outside looking in, you feel like you dealt with it amazingly, but I, I definitely had a, gotten a weird paranoia. I do, no, but see, this is the thing. It's funny that you say, mm -hmm. I think on the inside, we had a lot of the same experiences. And then maybe in some of the most superficial ways, we had slightly different experiences. Because like I never felt that whole keys to the city thing. I felt like <laughs> it's so silly because I'm not, it's not a sensitive topic, but at the time it was, hmm. I did not feel, I still felt like I didn't know how to get into the club. I didn't know how to get, not, not, hmm. the, not on the show, but into literally the clubs. I remember like oh, I, cause you know, I didn't go out as much as the rest of the crew and and I and yeah. I I often felt uncomfortable because I didn't mm. feel like I was as easily able to get in. I mean, the one time I name dropped myself to get into, I mean, it was I did it once because like I wasn't being let in, and I was like, oh, man. And I was <laughs> actually going out with Matt Settle. It was I was going out with Matt Settle, and he really wanted to have fun. And, and 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 so so we go to the box on like a Tuesday night or oh something. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. and we had just shot there. We had just shot an episode there. Oh my god! And um and Salt's I wasn't being let in, and I was just like, and I didn't. 
really want to be there, you know, but I was like trying to show Matt a good time. And so I talked my way in by showing them my IMDB. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh, and see, this is, this is, this is, and so this is what I mean. The, the story actually gets like kind of funnier and worse that I'm not going to tell on a podcast, but, <laughs> but, 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 but I'm like, this is, and I, I mean this in the best way, Chase. It's like, I, I like, it's funny because I actually feel like we can just laugh about it now, but right. Like I suspect that you have never had to show a doorman your IMDb <laughs> to get into a club. And I'm just saying that I have. And I don't know why it's different because we should, we, we're essentially on the same level. We should be the same in that respect. We're on the same show. You know, like what, what, what is that though? I, I don't like, am I, am I right or am I wrong? Have you ever had... Have you even? Have you, it was because I went out had, way too much. Was a problem. <laughs> Everyone right? knew you by name. <laughs> uh, yeah, which is also another problem. I was jealous of you, and and no, but I have shown I have shown a, a, someone at the grocery store my Wikipedia page because I didn't have my ID and I was trying to buy like a case of beer or something like that. And I was like, oh god, this feels weird. I got this is my age is on. Is yeah. this count? You know what I mean? But, yeah. That's right. Uh, no, but man, I know I hear you, and and uh, yeah, there was that thing of like. Uh, I don't know. It, it was also like that thing for me of like, I guess this is what we this do. This is what you do. Well, no, right. Well, actually, like, so this is how we be social, which kind of distorted my my reality of that for but, those years afterwards. You know, it was that's like, the people pleasing wow, thing. That wasn't real like, life. Like, no, we were. Life. That was I think a normal a, Friday night. You know, like no, wow. and we were we were in our own way ushered into these roles that everybody expected us to fill. You know. And I think, right. and I, I mean, what you're talking about, that people pleasing thing, which again, like I very much have, I think a lot of actors actually naturally have this because you're, you know, you're just, you're trying to please a lot of people, frankly. Mm -hmm. And right. you always struck me as somebody who, who constantly found themselves surprised to be a center of attention and very uncomfortable with it. And, <laughs> and, and they're a very true assessment, dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause, yeah. and I mean, and I would imagine that started once you started growing once you, I mean, I know you couldn't, you know, throw a snap. What do you say? How do you say what <laughs> snap you snap a, Throw a spiral, throw a spiral. We'll throw edit spiral. it, Penn. Say no. it again, say it again. <laughs> no, but what is it? You snap. What's the what's the term? You, you say snap in a way. What's the what's the you, term? You, you take the snap and... and, uh, and uh, I guess. I, I sound like such an idiot right now. Like, <laughs> well, let's go back. You said it, it again. Not say us. it again. <laughs> I'm just trying to... No, but really, like, I, I feel like I, the times that we did go out, and it was fun, by the way. I really loved going out with the crew and I would regard the whole thing. And you, and you, I just feel like you, you were, you were in this really interesting position where you were like, like people think that I am, you know, a symbol of something or objectified. And I think you have that experience even more. Mm. And I mean, I have it a lot. I, so I don't know, man, I'm just saying like, I uh, always really admired the way you just, you just were so gracious with like virtually mm. everybody in like every scenario because i th i think that and you know man yeah I, I i you know it's not like maybe it's not kosher for you to say yeah that's hard but i'm saying i watched that and i was experiencing it myself but you were experiencing it even more and mm. i know what that's like and i actually think that was hard and i think you dealt with it really graciously thank you man i yeah yeah i mean it was again yeah like it was just that thing of we were all you know uh you and all of us included trying to find our way and it was intense, man. It was, it, it was, it was a lot. Yeah. And then after, you know, when it, when it all sort of ends, I kind of describe it like, like, again, like an athlete or, or, or a quarterback or someone getting, getting injured or ending, ending their career, like instantly. And, and your identity is just kind of mm, like pulled wow. out the rugs pulled out from under you. Like all those. Jeez, I've never heard anyone that. describe it like that. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah, like the the hair and makeup girls, you like you wake up and, and that and that and Richie, the driver's out there, and you get to have your morning like jam session with him, and it's you're laughing and talking sports, mm -hmm. and you and you get hair and makeup, and those girls are your therapists. You know, we're all laughing. It was <laughs> yeah. just such. I mean, I I we had so, I mean, you know, for for all the crazy stuff we went through, we had such a good time. Oh, I mean, I, no, I saw was... Amy in, in New York, and she was just like, man, like we all really had some good laughs and good and good morning, early mornings and good late nights on set. I mean, it was a special time and to have yeah. that pulled away at the end of it too, for me was really jarring to have to move back or, you know, I, I felt like I had to move back to LA. I definitely didn't, but to, to move back and be 
during in, in back there, I was I, I didn't handle it too well for a while. Okay, I do want to ask my very specific question. So I have heard that you and Ed lived together. And I remember actually when I heard it, it was like several years ago before I even met Penn. And I remember thinking like, why didn't Penn live with them? Obviously, I didn't know anything about like the industry. It's not like normal for actors to necessarily live together. But right. I have thought about it. And I've thought about how the plot of the first season was like Penn is lonely boy and Nate and Chuck are like, you know, really good friends. Penn's the outsider, but Serena draws him in. And in real yeah. life, Penn and Blake were dating. You and Ed were living together. And I'm just wondering, like, what? how did that impact dynamics? And Penn, did you feel like an outsider? Well, I, I survived, for one thing. So that's, <laughs> that's the, but I'll tell you what it is. I remember what it was, because we all got there. Um, we're staying at the, at the, the Ian Schrager Hotel. What is it? The, the Gramercy Park Oh, Hotel. the Gramercy, which was, yeah, was we shot crazy. the pilot and we stayed at the Gramercy. It was a beautiful hotel. It was nice. beautiful and an amazing little bar with a pool table down there. And we're all sort of getting to know each other. And I mean, I don't think Penn showed up to like the day before shooting or maybe we'd already started filming. And so, you know, I had had a oh, little bit of time. Right. Yeah. right? And that what happened? I, yeah. I actually think that's true. I actually, I mm -hmm. forgot, but I think that's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Ed, we had simply just had a dinner and I think Ed was so had never really spent any time in America. I didn't even know, understand New York prices, but we were kind of there like, yo, do you want to like, it's expensive. We should like, do you want a room yeah. together? Maybe? He's like, yeah. And he never even saw the place. Me and my mom went like the summer before or after it got picked up. I had my dad like loan us the first and last months of security deposit rent because we had no money. I mean, we had to like pay my dad back and Ed never saw the place. He just showed up in New York and we were sleeping. Like, I think he slept to open his suitcase and slept on it. Like on the first, wow. like, the first night, you know what I mean? Like, wow. yeah. so it was, it was like that. We were like 18, 20, you know, 19, mm -hmm. 21 years old. But uh, yeah. So. Penn, did you feel like an outsider? How did that sort of dynamic play out? Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, yes and no, not really. I mean, I see, I'd already been in television for so long. I was like, right. really unsure about whether or not I wanted to continue. And so I went in, I went into it being really unsure and conflicted, uh, which is evidently my MO. Um, <laughs> but I, I, and so I just was like, ah, you know, I think I was just socially anxious. I didn't necessarily feel like an, like an outsider. I mean, that word now, um, I'm just imagining the way people will hear this and then interpret it. I know. They'll be like, uh, the headline will be yeah. like, lonely boy. Actually lonely boy. Lonely. Still lonely. Still a boy. <laughs> Very like, lonely please, boy. Let's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm texting you right after this interview. <laughs> <laughs> It's like no news of any podcast. Just Chase hates Penn, Penn outsider on afraid. his own show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, nah, you know, it, it is, I think what is fascinating is how you do weirdly start to in some ways echo the dynamics of the show you're on. I don't know what that is exactly. Mm. That's like a, that's, that's almost maybe more of like a niche psychological phenomenon that would be interesting to explore, but not here. It, right, but right, it, right. It, it is, cause I mean, look, I don't think anybody can be cast that far outside of their quote unquote type. I mean, unless you're obviously playing against it for a reason, but I don't think anybody can really, I mean, until you're, I don't know, much older and you're, and you're, you're like a committed character actor in some capacity. I think, you know, when you're, when you're 19, 20 years old, you're going to get mm -hmm. cast as some kind of version of yourself, but then made very two dimensional and simplified. Mm -hmm. So I, so I think we were all just conscious of, you know, how people perceived us. That, that was definitely, you know, I mean, the, the greatest struggle I had with, with, uh, with Gossip Girl was simply that people thought I was like Dan in any, in any aspect of mm -hmm. me. In any aspect of me that did resonate or did did share anything with Dan that they could that could then lead people to just ever more assume like oh yeah he is like his character that is basically when you're on a show like that and I'm not saying it's right or wrong it's just it is like one of the most frustrating and disempowering feelings in the world you know right. to you I'm not saying in the real world I'm saying to you when you're going <laughs> through it it's it actually it puts you back in middle school and you feel. Like these, you know, your feelings are are all you have at the end of the day, in the beginning of and every day. And people don't realize that when they're saying it. They think it's mm -hmm. like un un unintentional and harmless. And they're just like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, you know, but it is. It is. Yeah, you're right, man. 